Savior on the cross, and I refer you to Luke 23, verse 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. That's from the King James. From reading this uh, verse, a number of points come to mind and should be really foremost when trying to get a grip or an understanding of these scriptures. Number, the first uh, item I want to bring to your point or bring to your uh, uh, attention. These were the last words of Jesus in his incarnate state. Each of these seven sayings or statements of Jesus, each of them is in direct fulfillment of prophecies yes. from the Old Testament. I do not have time to go through those, go through those, but that's a fact. We see. Once again, that Jesus is back in communion with the Father because three hours previous, God the Father had turned away from Jesus' the sin offering. And when Christ was taking our sins, he became a sin offering for all time. He was taking the sins of the whole world on our behalf. And this was during the time that the pitch black darkness was setting in, the temple built being torn in half from top to bottom. The earth experienced a huge earthquake of gigantic proportions. Some even talk about the the Earth's axis, even shifting. Also, the rocks split into pieces. We further note that this statement is the result of a person who is yielding in a 100% fashion to the will of God. We also note that for more than 12 hours, Jesus had been in the hands of men. In the book of Matthew 17, verses 22-23, that tells us that the Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. Now, Jesus, with this seventh saying, is voluntarily delivering his spirit into the hands of the Father. What a contrast. Never again will he suffer shame, or will he ever be at the mercy of the truly wicked. Three days later, the Father will even raise him from the dead. Also, from what happened on the cross, Jesus was very unique. He laid his life down for us in a manner that God the Father was completely satisfied with. The sacrifice was necessary just once, but for all time. Yeah. Past, present, and future. Jesus had to taste death and separation from God the Father just once. Yeah. Now in John 10, 17, 18, the following verse, verses say this, Therefore doth my Father love me? Because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. In the next verse, he says, No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. So he's doing this 100% voluntarily. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it back again. So Jesus is under control. So therefore, Jesus is surrendering his life as the spotless Lamb of God, without spot or blemish. Further... We can learn more about this final saying in John 15, verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. This describes precisely just what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. Note when you discover Psalm 31, verse 5, it says, Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. This is a foreshadowing of the death of Jesus back in the Old Testament. Jesus is confidently sending his spirit through the same to his loving Father. It's an act of contentment. He fully trusts in the destination of his spirit, and he does it as an act of faith. Now seven, this is the seventh saying, seven is the number of completion, or yeah. some say perfection. Hence the seven sayings of the cross. Seven is the number of rest in the finished work. 
we know that the earth was made in six days, and on the seventh day God rested and saw that it was good. The sixth utterance was, it is finished, just like the creation was finished on the sixth day. To sum up, the first saying was a word of forgiveness. The second, a word of salvation. The third saying, a word of affection. The fourth saying, a word of anguish. The fifth saying, a word of suffering. The sixth was a word of victory. And finally, the seventh one that I'm on, a word of contentment. And I just want to refer you to the words of an old hymn. Uh, the, the title of the hymn is Grace Greater Than Our Sins by D.B. Towner. My wife pointed out the last two verses are particularly apropos. Let me just read them. Dark is the stain that we cannot hide. What can avail to wash it away? Look, there is flowing a crimson tide. Whiter than snow you may be today. Marvelous grace, God's grace. Grace of all pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace that is greater than all our sin. Last verse, here it is. Get ready. Put on your seatbelts. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace, freely bestowed on all who believe. Notice the catch. you got to believe. You that are longing to see his face, will you this moment his grace receive? And that's what it is, his grace receives. So this is your opportunity even today, right now, to receive his grace. May God bless you and understand his word. Thank you.